sorry, there we go. Uh, that's better, hopefully. Um, what I'd like to do in this session is just to talk a bit about the results of the hack day that uh, we had uh, in conjunction with the project here at the COGAT offices last month. So hack day is something we do quite regularly at COGAT and we try to involve external partners. Uh, so we're extremely intrigued when we were approached about the project uh, and asked to come up with some ideas and um, see what could be done with the data in, in a way of a bit more of a, a playful way, uh, perhaps. So the first thing we did was to uh, carry out a couple of planning sessions. So again, remotely uh, with Jamie and Callian and, and the rest of the team to really try to get our heads around what was involved. And I, I must admit, to begin with, I found it very confusing, but ultimately realized that it, well, we, we're talking about this big knowledge graph or connected by an explicit connection, uh, which in turn can be queried by the, the connections API, uh, but also that by implied connections by the, the similarity API that the neighbors that Callum was talking about. And so once we started to think about those concepts, we started to get some ideas together. And then what was really nice that we then had a, a bit of a feedback loop in that um, I would go back to Callian and Jamie and say, we thought of these ideas, how possible is this? Uh, and actually this resulted in a, a couple more outputs from the project uh, that you'll see using some of the demos. So the, the first one was the idea of a distance API of taking two different points within the knowledge graph and saying, well, how far away are these from each other? Um, as opposed to the similarity one, which will tell you the, the neighbors um, for any given object or point in the graph. Uh, and then the second one is, um, Callian mentioned the idea of, of re dimensionality reduction going from the, the uh, vector representation of thousands of different things down to something like the 2D version that uh, is used in the demonstrator that uh, Callian showed. And it was, uh, one idea was, well, what if we change that to three dimensions instead? So what this ended up with was uh, you know, a, a short list of, here are the discarded ideas. We, we had some things, uh, thinking of things like a, a radar interface as you uh, were inside the graph and, and looking out, what would you see in your proximity? Uh, other things, again, about traversing the graph, six degrees of separation, how far could you go? A resource collecting game where you would, would fly around and, and pick up uh, materials that were associated with different objects from the combined collections of the Science Museum and the VNA. Uh, we wonder about an audio, what would an audio in only interface look like to hear a, a soundscape of uh, the, the neighbors within space. And then looking at other things like aggregating data by topic, taking the, the Wikipedia topics that often form hubs and, and linkages between things, and then saying, okay, what could we do if we provide summary information about all of these? Uh, and finally, one, uh, one of John Sachs' ideas, the, the idea of sort of a, a free exploration through the graph, but at the same time building up a sort of vapor trail or breadcrumb trail of, of where you've been already. And you'll see some of these ideas got carried forward. So we then had the, the hack day itself. Um, there are some photos of us all uh, either hacking or demoing. And Ultimately, we came up with five projects on the day, which uh, I'd like to talk you through now. So without further ado, onto the demos. Uh, this first one, uh, a project called Good Neighbors, where we were using the Heritage Connector Neighbors API uh, to look at relationships and then various other APIs too. But I will hand over to Sotirius to talk through this project. Uh, and welcome to a demonstration of my Heritage Connector Hack Day project. On this home page, uh, we're displaying some information that's pulled in from Twitter. And each of these boxes relates to a tweet that was sent recently and contains a link to a science museum object. And once we click on them, we're taken to our next page. On this page, we're showing information that has been pulled in from the Science Museum API, so the picture and the description. Uh, and we're also presented with three options to explore the object's neighbors. 
So what's going on behind the scenes here is that we're asking for 500 neighbors of this object from the heritage connector and then we're offering the closest neighbor one that's the 250th furthest away neighbor and the furthest away neighbor uh, as options and when we click on these the page reloads but with a new object and so we're presented with an opportunity to explore the science museum's objects in a related but slightly random path. And as we keep going, we can jump around. Now if you wish to go back and explore a different route, you can use the, uh, the, the history that's preserved on the page. And if you hit a bit of a dead, dead end, you can go back home and click on a different object. Okay, this object seems like a pretty good place to start. Thank you very much for your time. And um, welcome to a demonstration. So that was the first project. Uh, next up, we've uh, got a project from uh, the Science Museum themselves about creating a map interface for uh, based on the results and knowledge graph. This is a visualization of all the points of interest in the Heritage Connector Knowledge Graph. So the uh, Wikidata entities that exist within the graph uh, were passed through a service to extract all those that had a latitude and longitude, and that resulted in just short of 40,000 points of interest. In this way is the kind of spread of the knowledge graph across the globe. And obviously you can zoom in and right down to the individual pin level and click on those so i'll just i'll just pick out a couple of examples of interesting pins so if we go over to albuquerque new mexico and we zoom right into the city this pin here is um returns this point in the knowledge graph which is a laboratory here's the link to the uh, wikidata entry from and from there you can get to wikipedia and it returns related to this two objects uh, uh, one this one in the vnas collection uh, so this one in the uh, vnas collection and if you scroll down you can see that they uh, this was uh, created uh, at the time that robbins worked for the, for that uh, corporation in, in albuquerque so if we then go back and click on the uh, science museum group collection object again so here we go related to the laboratory and so these two objects are now collected connected through the knowledge graph at this point which is then visualized on the map by this pin so next up uh, we've got a project called link race but uh, in this case we took uh, the starting point was a data dump from the Heritage Connector knowledge graph in the form of uh, a whole load of N triples, uh, which were then processed via Python uh, using Network X library. So um, over to Nitin to talk through this project. Well, welcome to a quick demo of one of the projects from the COGAP Hack Day with the Heritage Connector dataset in. November 2021. The idea of this project was to help um, users to understand how objects across collections from the Science Museum and the VNA are connected. Um, and the challenge here is for a given starting point, in this case a fan, um, how do we navigate the collections so that we can pass through each of these steps and get to this electric fire pump um, so as an example you can click on each of these objects and, and find out a little bit more um, from the relevant institution um, and I, I suppose the user should have the endpoint in mind so we're looking for something in the engineering world uh, maybe in the fire um, world and, and, and something to do with water so those are all clues for the user to look out for as they're trying to find what the, the next best step is. And you can see here um, for a given object or a given step, there are a few options that we've calculated here. So using the, the Heritage Connected data set, we can 
find neighbours of the given object. So there are four options here, three of which are red herrings, um, which happen to be related, random objects, and one we know is um, the next best step along this path from A to B. So the challenge for the user is to use this information to dig into that information a little bit more and decide whether that's the right move to make. Um, so for example, if I click on this object, grow your own food, a poster from the Second World War, you'll see here that if we try to step there, it actually doesn't let us and it's, it's basically saying, this isn't the ne next best step, so try again. So let's try um, stepping up one level, so going up to the parent um, of the item that we're on. And you'll notice here, some of these are objects in the collection, some of these are attributes of the objects themselves. Um, so this is part of the work that the Heritage Connector did to build that data set. Um, and you can see that actually now that that was a successful step, it's populated the second box and it's given us four more options for the next, next step. Um, in this case, I'm going to skip through this because um, some of these are, are quite obvious. Um, in this case, this is something a little bit more interesting where we can clearly see we're honing in on, on that final object here. So we have something that looks like it's a very, very related object. So for example, it's made by the same company um, and it happens to be something related to fire, fire extinguishing. So we'll step there. And finally, we can continue and just try some random options or continue on. And finally, um, we can see that we're almost there and actually, in fact, the item we're looking for is in this list of options and therefore we have completed the path. And what it then gives you is a summary of your journey so far. So you can go back and kind of relive that journey um, and obviously explore that a little bit more by clicking on these links out to the re relevant collection. Um, but also you can play again by clicking this button in the top right corner. Welcome to. Uh, so there we go with that one. Uh, so next up uh, was a project looking at how connections could be made slightly wider, even wider than the already wide uh, number of connections within the Heritage Connect dataset itself. Uh, this was something that again queried the connections API, but also looked at data from some other websites as well. The Augmentinator is a browser extension. As each page is loaded, it checks to see whether it can identify that this is about a person for which it knows a Wikidata ID. And if so, it then checks the Heritage Data Connector to see if there is data for that person. Only if it succeeds on both of these does it make its presence known by injecting a discrete control into the bottom of the window. If the user clicks this, the Augmentinator reveals related objects discovered through the Heritage Connector. Where possible, these are illustrated with thumbnails and they have a link out to the resource. It only displays objects for now, but this could potentially include other items, such as related papers or events. Currently, the Augmentinator is able to identify some individuals on two sites, about three quarters of the people on Science in the Making and some 45,000 sitters in the National Portrait Gallery website. Although not all of these have material in the Heritage Connector. But it could easily be extended to many others. The Augmentinator. Hello. Sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, back into the graph. Um, so, I'd like to point out I, bet, uh, I don't think it actually works on t shirt sites yet, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, next up, we have a project uh, called Rhizome. So, it's again looking at the connections but uh, 
finding a slightly different way to uh, display them through a different interface. Hello, this is a demonstration of the Rhizome app, which was developed by uh, myself, uh, James, and designed by Grant at COGAP. And it was created as part of the Hack Day with uh, COGAP and the Science Museum. And the idea behind it is to develop this rhizome structure, where a rhizome is a link of nodes that grow over time and sprout up in different directions. So in the end, you don't know the root of the rhizome, but you can see the structure as it develops over time. And here, the nodes are representative of science museum objects or Wikidata links. And the connections between the nodes uh, are found via the Heritage Connector API. So for each object or link, it will find new nodes from those uh, objects or links. So I'll dive into it here. So here you see it starts off with one object, which is the AN PSN8 Manpack GPS receiver. And uh, if you click over here, you'll see this sidebar pops up, which welcomes you to the app and tells you to click on the node. So if I click this node here, then it will uh, load up uh, the information from the Science Museum with the image and a link to the page on the Science Museum. And then as the structure grows out, you'll see if you hover over each of these nodes, you'll see uh, the objects or links that it's connected to. So if we click another one here, you see it's come up with Rockwell International. And here you can see it's getting a lot of uh, GPS receivers and, uh, and the Tomahawk apparently. Oh which is a cruise missile, lovely. And you can uh, restart the app if you wanna see uh, a new structure start to form. So here it's just loading in a random object from the Science Museum and it will start off with a new structure. So here it started off with um, a model of Lewinworks microscope. So you can see that here. And as you can see, new links are starting to appear over time and you can rotate this and zoom in and out and have a play around and that's it thanks so next up uh, we've got another project by the science museum themselves which is looking at uh, what they could do about placing all the information on a timeline So this demonstration uh, was made by myself and Rhiannon Lewis um, at the Hackathon. And we used Timeline.js, which is a project from the Knight Lab at North Northwestern University. So we took the elements of the knowledge graph uh, for all of the uh, people and all of the events. And then we ran them through a wiki data service um, in OpenRefine to pull out birth dates and death dates, times and periods of events and so on. And then and then plotted them. So you can move backwards and forwards through time uh, and then click on um, individuals' uh, uh, points of interest. Clicking on the link in the timeline uh, opens the, the, that point in the knowledge graph. And from there, we can navigate into uh, related content from the VNAs collection, um, other points in the knowledge graph, the block, and so on. So, just by way of example, here's a poster related to Julius Caesar and then going back from the Science Museum collection uh, photograph from the Daily Hill archive actually not illustrated in this case or over here in this example um, and here you can start to see the sheer density of the number of points in the knowledge graph this is the discovery exhibition Opening up the knowledge graph, you can see that the Science Museum group 
has this object related to the expedition and then moving back looking at what the, the VNA link to the captain of the expedition and then a photograph in the VNA's collection. Uh, so last project to demo is uh, one that was done by me and my colleague Ian, uh, where in this case uh, we took the three-dimensional data from the similarity information uh, and decided to play around with it. Uh, welcome to me and Tristan's Heritage Hack Day Connector project. This is 3D Space Curator, a, uh, a new way of exploring the Heritage Connector data in the medium of uh, 3D space game. So uh, let me click to enter free look mode. So I'm now um, got this little targeting reticle in the middle. Uh, whichever star comes into the center of that view, um, we'll do an API lookup to find the matching object. Uh, so let's zoom in on a, a little cluster here. So let's see what kind of object uh, is in this cluster. Okay, so we've got, um, I'm not sure what that is, let's bookmark it for later. Um, let's see what else is related. Uh, okay, so we've got some uh, piece of paper it looks like. And so if I want to get more information, I can hit escape and then I can uh, click. I can see that this is a print uh, from the V&A Museum and it's lyrics for the song The Floating Parliament. Uh, let's go back and see what else we can find. Uh, we've got another cluster over here. So these are some more prints it looks like. Uh, let's bookmark that. Yep, a collection of prints. Uh, okay, let's try a different cluster. This is, uh, looks like some textiles. Um, very nice. Okay, uh, say we're bored of this sector of space. We can now hit hyperspace. We can jump into a completely different sector of space. So this one is a little uh, more sparsely populated. But we've still got a few clusters. So here we've got, um, oh, what is this? Looks like some uh, stuff related to mining. Uh, let's bookmark some of these. And yeah, let's have a look. So we hit escape to exit free look mode. And then we can click. And yeah, we can look through the, um, the objects. This one is from the Science Museum. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to have a look, have a go. Um, the URL is there. Um, and this is also the source code should be open um, on GitHub. So yeah, um, let us know what you think. Thank you. Uh, so there we go. So um, as Ian mentioned, for most of the demos, then there are actual online versions of these as well, which are linked from the various blog posts uh, that you can find at that address, which I've, I've also put into the chat. Um, if anyone's got any questions or comments, I'm happy to answer them now, or if not, then my contact details are on this slide as well. Thank you. Hi, great. So thanks, Tristan. It was a very fun day. Um, so yeah, quick question. So like reflecting on using like a data set which is in a sense really different from how a collect how you'd normally work if you were building like an online collection interface for a museum, which is I know something that you've probably done several times in your life. Like how how did it feel like working with something that in a sense has like a sort of different flavor? Did you feel like there were like more opportunities to do creative explorations and do things that would be engaging to the public? Are there ways that you think oh it would be interesting to sort of push it in an, in a further direction? So uh, I think, uh, like I said at the beginning, I think that, that, you know, in some ways this was harder. It was a, a much trickier idea to get your head around than, as you say, a, a simple sort of collections management system API that is presenting stuff in a very traditional manner. Um, 
I do think it did make us think differently about the data and certainly the, the scale of it. And then in a way, realizing that everything is mediated either by connections or by clustering or grouping um, leads you naturally, I think, to start to think of interfaces along, along those lines. And so again, you'll, you'll see from a variety of demos, some of them are very much about the connection. So the, the, the link rate trying to get from a BNA object to a science museum or vice versa. Uh, other ones are very much about the, the, the neighbors. So um, whether that's, you know, finding similar items or, or this idea of exploring through space. And again, I think the, the, the thing about both of them really is, is the sheer scale of that and how you can reduce that to something, uh, you know, more human and, and more interesting. And to my mind, it feels like, well, you either have to start with an individual object or concept and, and work your way out, start very small, or, or you have to try to do something when you're looking at it en masse. Um, and that itself le leads, I think, to interesting possibilities that, that serendipitous discovery, um, you know, with the 3D space, um, 3D curator, uh, I found myself yeah, stuck in a, a cluster of very pointy objects uh, for some reason. And, and you know, it's, it, it's discovering things that you wouldn't normally find. Um, so, so yeah, it, it definitely made us think differently about museum collection data than, than we would normally for things like online collections. Um, sorry, the final point I would make is that it, in other ways it's liberating is that it gave us the freedom to think differently that um, most of our day job, we're trying to make things in a way as comprehensible as possible. The, the joy of the hack day stuff is you're, you're not constrained by that and you can start to consider, uh, you know, zanier things and, and more, um, playful things that don't necessarily have, have to be as comprehensible. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah, the, the idea of the hackathon was that we would just push it in some different directions to see where the edges were and where the opportunities were. Great. So thank you very much. You. So our last speaker, and we're almost perfectly on time, amazingly, is uh, Tim Boone. So